five priorities for men in prayer. I argued yesterday in the sermon that men are charged uh, with this mantle of leadership, not only in the home, but in the church, and, and in large part, they are to be leading in prayer, zealous uh, in worshipful uh, prayer. Uh, Paul tells Timothy that in every place men should lift holy hands in prayer. And this is, uh, this is something that I did not get into yesterday in that sermon was the practicalities to it. What are, what are men to even be praying for? What are the priorities of men in prayer? Not just when they lead in corporate worship, but in other settings. Uh, what are they to pray for? And so I want to get into that. But let me just say this uh, quickly because everything hinges on this foundation that uh, men are the heads of not only the home, not only the church, but even culture. We, 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 we trace back Jesus and Paul's arguments uh, that are always rooted in the creation order. Uh, I've done this many times. We've talked through these things, so I won't go over this again. But I think it's important to remember that Adam, as the federal head of humanity, uh, was charged with leadership and had the responsibility um, as as federal head of humanity, but but not in a in a singular function. It was more of a threefold type function. This garden temple that was Eden, uh, he was to be prophet, priest, and king. And so Van Til argues that a man was prophet as prophet is to interpret the world. Uh, as priest, man is to dedicate the world to God, and as king, he is to rule over God's created. Uh, God's creation. And so Adam was to do this worshipful work in Eden, in constant communication with the Almighty, not disconnected or silent regarding uh, toward God, but communing with God in the garden as he did his work for strength uh, to do that work with, uh, to dedicate that work unto God, and that it would be set apart for God. And this was the ideal uh, way that man was to work and, and, and to lead and, and to be a federal head of humanity. And obviously we know how the story goes that Adam failed. And uh, in fact, the second generation after Adam, there was massive failure with his sons, Cain killing Abel. But it's interesting right after that, uh, we see in Genesis 4 something very interesting. It, it says uh, that a son, uh, to Seth the son was born, and he called his name Enosh. And then men began to call upon the Lord. So out of the, out of the ashes and the rubble of fallen generations of manhood, men rise up doing what? Calling on the name of the Lord, praying. And so men are to pray, and men are to be leaders in the home, in the culture, in the church regarding prayer. And I find it interesting, you know, there's all this outrage about, uh, you know, no pray, we can't pray in the schools. And, you know, over the last 50 years, there's just been so much pushback about prayer leaving the schools. And uh, I don't see that same outrage about, uh, about praying in the home, praying in the church, uh, that's that's so absent in so many contexts, um, and it really all of the absence in all these spheres where prayer is nearly happening uh, can be laid at the feet of the men. We are to lead uh, brothers when it comes to prayer. Here are five priorities that I think men should be praying for for the good of the world, for the glory of God. Here's number one: we got to pray for ourselves. You start with self. Now, that's not a point of selfishness. That's not pride. Uh, it's not that we aren't loving others by doing that. It's because we love God, and it's because we love others that we would prioritize prayer for self. Because if you don't have your own life ordered, uh, if you don't have your own, uh, if, you're, if you're not disciplining yourself for godliness— and, and making prayer a priority, you, you lack the, the spiritual strength and passion to do and to handle all that God has put on your plate to handle. Your wife and your children, uh, your other employers, your job, many of the things, uh, your, your ministry to the church will be lacking if you neglect prayer. But prioritizing prayer fuels and strengthens you to bear up your burdens and responsibilities in, in all these other areas. And so we must prioritize prayer for self. 
Now, I, I want to mention two books here that I think are very helpful when it comes to praying for ourselves. Uh, the first one is is called Power Through Prayer, E.M. Bounds. So anything you can find from E.M. Bounds on prayer, uh, you need to find. You read over this little book for five minutes, and, and you'll put the book down, and you'll just start going to pray. Uh, it's one of those inspiring books that uh, is very anointed of the Lord to encourage our prayers. Um, the thing I would say, though, when a man comes to me and asks how he can begin to grow in prayer, I tell him two things. Number one, pray the Lord's Prayer. You know, when 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 Jesus was asked how to pray, Lord, teach us to pray, he, he told men to pray the Lord's Prayer. And so you should pray the Lord's Prayer every day and not just recite it and, you know, 10 seconds, uh, but use the categories there. Hallowed be your name. And then you praise the Lord. You thank the Lord. You, 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 you hallow his name. Uh, you, you pray for his kingdom to advance, for his will to be done, that you could be used to advance his kingdom and his will, that you would love what he loves and hate what he hates, that you would, uh, you would advance righteousness with your life, uh, that, that your life would bear more fruit for his glory. And, you, and, and then you pray for that you would not be led into temptation. You pray that he would forgive your sins. There's, there's so many categories in the Lord's Prayer that you can build out in five minutes in the morning, I would suggest. Now, if you have a longer time to pray, uh, and you should take certain times in the week and just get away maybe for 30 minutes, get away for an hour and go pray. And, and at that point, I would tell a man, get a Bible, take it with you. Don't bring your phone, bring a Bible and pray through Proverbs uh, 5 through 7. And after you've finished reading and praying through Proverbs 5, 6 and 7, then you could move on to Psalm 1, Psalm 2. You could move on to Psalm 23 and 24. You could move on to uh, Matthew 5. You could pray through Ephesians 5 and Ephesians 6. You could pray through Colossians 3. There's many rich, rich chapters that would keep you praying for as long as you wanted to be out there praying. And, and your prayers, without the, without the Bible, our prayers are going all over the place. They're sloppy, they're lazy, your mind is wandering. But as soon as you start to pray scripture, your mind is locked in. You're able to pray with an efficiency, with a, with a clarity, and you're able to pray with faith. Because James says if we pray with doubting, we shouldn't expect to receive anything from him. So we want to pray with faith. And when we pray scripture, we know we're praying according to God's will. And if we pray according to his will, Jesus said, we know that we have whatever we ask of him. And so we got to pray scripture. Uh, This book right here would be helpful as well. This is Donald Whitney's little book on praying the Bible. I don't know if these are all blurred out trying to see this. Praying the Bible by Donald Whitney. Uh, That book's very helpful to show the biblical basis for praying the scriptures. You should pray uh, the scriptures for yourself. That's number one. Number two, and I'll go quickly through these. Uh, Number two, pray for your family. Pray for your wife. Pray for your children. If you have them, pray for your grandchildren. Uh, If you're single, pray for a wife. Pray that God give you children. Uh, Apart from those who have a gift of singleness, Possibly, uh, it is natural for a man to want a wife and want children, and he should pray that God give those gifts to him uh, and seek the Lord for that. Uh, The men that have received children, you should pray that they, from a young age, they would walk with the Lord. And not just pray for them, but pray with them. Begin to help them understand they must start their day in prayer. They must dedicate the day to the Lord. It is the Lord's day. And they should give thanks for it. And they should pray for strength uh, to work with diligence and serve and bless others in their lives. Close the day thanking the Lord for prayer and family worship or before you put your kids to bed. Pray at meals. You see, you can already just doing that. You have five set times for prayer. If you just pray with your family at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, at meals during the day, that's five times of, of set prayer with your children. If you add family worship in there, that's six. Do you see how how much prayer can begin to fill a family and a, and a man can lead in those prayer times? And they can be short prayers, very short prayers, and teaching your children to pray. Third, your church, your local church. You need to pray for your church. Um, I, I would recommend uh, this book called uh, A Call to Spiritual Reformation, Priorities from Paul, 
uh, in his prayers. So Paul in the epistles, uh, D.A. Carson in this book, he highlights all the ways that Paul exemplifies and example uh, gives an example of how to pray for the church, all the categories that would be uh, most pertinent in our prayers to pray for our local churches. Um, and so he, he lays those out. So you should just read the epistles and say, what did they ask? What did they pray for? What is a church to be and do? And I should pray toward those ends. And the, and the primary one is unity. Prayers for unity. Prayers for maturity. Prayers for growth and godliness. Uh, yes, for the sick. Yes, for needs in that particular body. But there's many things that we want to grow up into uh, as the church. We should pray for our, our church. We should pray with our church. We have a corporate prayer time in our church where we pray uh, before the service. Um, men should lead their families to be part of that. Uh, in city groups, uh, we have time where men and women break off and they pray. They, men should lead their families to prioritize prayer, not just for the church, but with the church. Fourth, men should pray for missions and the advancement of the kingdom of God, uh, even in their work. So, um, you know, Again, this is why you come to corporate prayer. This is why you pray with the other men in the church, because many of the prayers in those settings or are for the advancement of the kingdom. We have missionaries that we're praying for specifically. Um, we have uh, we have particular needs uh, that that we pray for. For for example, in the bulletin every week, we have men that lead prayer for a particular unreached people group, and those are in the bulletin. You can use that with your family. You can use that in your own devotion to pray for the advancement of the gospel to the nations. But remember, Florida is the end of the earth, right? Uh, the, the beginning when these things were said were in the Middle East. That's when Jesus said these things. So the, the gospel advancing to the ends of the earth is where we live. And so we want to pray for our local community. We want to pray for more counselors to be raised up, more open doors for evangelism, uh, co-workers, neighbors, family, friends, that the gospel would go forth, that we would preach and teach the gospel with boldness in our own city. We want to pray for the, for the other churches to be faithful to the gospel in our city. And then lastly, and fifth, uh, national prayers, prayers for our leaders in particular. Uh, Paul is very clear with Timothy that he should teach his people and in, in the church in Ephesus in particular and all churches uh, to be praying for all people, for those who are kings and those in positions of power and authority. Now, anyone who neglects that is not only just disobeying that verse, but they're not understanding how political leaders, systems and structures and governments, local and national, affect our lives, affect our wives and children, affect our jobs, affect our churches. And so we need to strategically pray for these national, for these state level issues, uh, because they affect everything in our lives. And God has called us to pray toward those ends. Ian Bounds says, Paul calls a halt and lays a levy on men for prayer. Put them into praying is Paul's unfailing remedy for the great evils in the church, in the state, in politics, in business, and in the home. Put them into praying uh, in politics so politics will be cleansed, business will be thriftier, the church will be holier, and the home will be sweeter. And so it is of first importance in the apostolic tradition to prioritize prayer not just in the home, not just in our own lives, not just in the church, but for the sake of the culture, for the advancement of the kingdom of God on this earth. And, you know, guys, just think, I mean, what would it be like for a church to be filled with men who prioritize prayer like this? What would it be like for a child to grow up and this is his father prioritizing prayer like this? What would it be like for a wife to be led by a man who was zealous to pray like this? What would it be like if every employer had these type men working for them? What would it be like for a nation who had churches filled with men who prioritized prayer for these things? May the Lord help us to be faithful brothers, uh, to pray for these five things and that we could lead uh, the, the women and the children in our lives to join us in praying for these things. May the Lord help us uh, in this. Blessings.